Hey guys, it's Tark with Cyclone FPV, and today I'm actually going to be working on a brand new radio, the X90, 2000, the X90 Plus 2019, which I'm going to do a picture picture here. You can see it sitting here on my desk, and I'll be honest with you, um, I just unboxed this, and I had videoed the unboxing of it, but um, I have been sitting here updating and doing a bunch of things, and so the whole video got screwed up, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to get back into this. So we're going to get started from scratch, okay? So here's what you're going to need. you got your radio. I do recommend that you get an SD card. I'm going to show you what to do with this one. This is a 64 gig card, and this radio is not really going to read a 64 gig card. So we're going to partition this down in Windows and make it smaller, all right? And, uh, and then that'll be able to be read on here, and that way I don't lose the money of a card that I have extra, okay? So if you happen to have a 16 gig card, that's great. I don't know if it'll read 32 gig. Uh, we, we can try that and see if it reads 32 gig, but I, I'm going to download mine to 16 anyway. So just follow this step real quick. So I've got a, a memory card reader here. It's a USB. I'm going to plug in my, uh, oops, I'm going to plug in my SD card right here. And I am going to um, go to my window screen here and I will show you that screen in just a second. So I'm going to plug that in and then I'm going to go ahead and plug in my uh, reader into my extension cord, my USB extension cord, and it's going to pull up this setup here. And then I'm going to, um, show you exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, so bear with me a second and let's share that screen over here. Okay, so before we do anything with the radio, right, we need to get our stuff set up here. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to click start and I'm going to click run and then I'm going to, I want you to go to type control in your uh, search there and click okay. And when that comes up, I want you to go ahead and now this is what I'm doing if I have a card that is too big, meaning it's not 16 gig or 32 gig. So if you, if your card is a 16 gig card, uh, then you're fine. Uh, and I'll, like I said, I'm going to see if it works on the 32. I'm not sure yet, um, but we're going to test it real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to my administrative tools. And I'm going to go to, um, uh, where am I at? Computer management. Double click on that. Okay. And I'm going to say disk management right here, right? Now I already partitioned this once, but I'm going to, this is my removable drive right here. I'm going to delete whatever's on there. Delete the volume. Right click on it. So watch what I do here. So right click and then click delete volume and make sure you're on your removable disk. Okay, click yes. So what I've got now is I've got a full, it's gonna make a full 64 gig memory stick here, right? And I don't want that. I'm just gonna go with 16. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click new simple volume. And it's gonna ask me for a size of that new simple volume. It's gonna take just a second, right? So let me go ahead and close that out. I don't like open screens. All right, all right, all right. So we're waiting for it to give me a new simple volume option. Let me try it again, new simple volume, there it is. And it's going to give me this wizard to set this up. So I'm going to click next. Now I'm going to tell it I want 16,000. So just type in the number 16,000. Again, I said I would test 32, but whatever. I'm going to just do 16. If you find that uh, it doesn't work, then uh, your 32 doesn't work, then go to 16. So 16 here, and I'm going to click next. And it's going to ask me to assign a drive letter. I'm going to click fine. That's E, next. And then it's going to tell me what kind of, uh, uh, how to format the file system. So it's, it's going to be FAT32, not NTFS, okay? and leave it as new volume. Don't worry about changing the name, just make sure it says FAT32, and don't worry about the allocation size, it's not gonna matter right now, so FAT32, and just leave it as new volume, and make sure you have perform a quick format. Click Next, okay, and then click Finish. Now it's gonna format that card, and partition it so that I can use it in this radio, right? So basically, I bought a bunch of those 64 gig cards, and um, they were cheap. I bought them much cheaper than I could a 32, but they don't work in this at that size, so we have to partition it down. So there it is now, my new volume, it's drive E, and it's empty, right? There's nothing on it, it's formatted. So we can close that down for now, and we can close this down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our website, and we're gonna have to download a few things, okay? So I'm gonna tell you right now ahead of time, what I would do is um, I would uh, go to your file folder here, open your, uh, open your folders, and make a new, I don't care where you put it, I've made so many of these now, I'm gonna delete this here. I've got a folder called transmitter, and I'm just gonna, let me go to my downloads, because this is the one I was gonna use for you guys, but I'm gonna delete it. All right, and um, I'm gonna make a new folder, what, what am I gonna call it? Um, I'll go into my documents, I guess, and I'm gonna make a new folder, and I'm gonna call it, um, Let's see, let's just call it uh, FR Sky or Free Sky uh, X90 plus 2019. Okay, and that's what you guys need to do. Just make a folder called, or whatever you want, but I'm going to do this one. If you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, then this is it. And with that folder, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say include in library. And I'm going to, I guess the library is going to be called transmitter. Um, or I can put it in documents. I'll put it in documents. It'll be easier to find. 
so now when I have my documents library, right, right here, uh, when I open that, there's my, uh, there's my um, folder, so I don't have to keep searching all the time, okay? So that's great, so now I've got that done, and then what I'm gonna do is in that folder, I'm gonna make a couple other folders, just so we're planning ahead here. So the new folder in the X90 plus uh, 2019 folder, we're gonna call one called um, uh, backup, okay? And we're gonna get the other one, and we're gonna call this next one um, uh, SD card, okay? So just, you have those two folders created now, and that's just a good heads up to be prepared, right? Now you can leave this open, and let's go to our website. And from here, you wanna to go to the cyclonefpv.com page, and then go to uh, blogs, post tutorials, click that plus, and click on tutorials. And, and here, uh, I guess the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and go to OpenTX, scroll down to get OpenTX, and click that. And I've left you, um, if you just click on the read more, I've left you some links as of today on where to go. So we want to go to the um, OpenTX uh, website, okay? And here's some quicker links, but I'm just going to show you. So click on this one. It's going to open a second page and scroll down until you get to 2.3.7. This is the newest release for what's going to work on your radio. Left click on that and then scroll down again. Um, and what you're going to look for here is there's a couple things you need, all right? Um, we're going to use the... Uh, we need the OpenTX Companion. Now, I've already loaded it, but I'm just going to download it again so you guys can see it, okay? So I'm going to click on that, and uh, I'm going to left-click on it. Now, it's going to download... Um, actually, I'm going to click Cancel, because I want it to download it to the folder here. So I'm going to click right-click, and I'm going to click uh, Open Link in New Tab. Oh, it's not going to help me. Never mind. Um, Sorry, I was hoping to do something different, but I'm getting now confused between my Mac and my PC. So just left click on it and download it. It's gonna save it to your downloads folder, okay? So we're gonna click show in folder. When it's done here, we're gonna click show in folder, sorry. And there it is. And what I wanna do is I wanna move it over to, if I click my documents there, and I did create that, um, uh, where's my stuff here? So in my, let me open this up here. And in my, um, documents I know I just put it here sorry guys so in my documents folder right and then I did create that file so let me go back so if I find that uh, documents folder my gosh all my stuff is here and I was hoping that it was going to give me my library but I don't see it right now so I want to go to my fr sky which is right here right so there's the folder I created so I'm gonna right click on my in my downloads I'm gonna right click on the file we just downloaded and click cut I'm gonna find my fr sky x90 plus 2019 and I'm gonna right click in that folder here and I'm gonna click paste. I basically wanna put the file here, all right? I wanna keep track of everything. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that web page, and you see where it says SD card contents 2.3.7. It says it uses 2.3 version 0026, okay? So uh, it says it uses the same one as 2.3.6. So I'm gonna click this right here, SD card content, and I'm gonna scroll down here until I find my radio. Now this is the X9D plus 2019. I'm gonna left click on it, and this is what it's saying it uses right here, okay? So we're gonna click on that, and it's gonna start downloading those card contents as well. Now this is 114 megs um, compressed, about 135 megs when it's expanded, and or 140 megs, and of that, almost all of it is um, audio from the different languages. So we're gonna try to shrink that down. I'm gonna show you how to consolidate that a little bit, okay? This could be pretty simple though, but uh, just follow that now, because what we wanna do is we wanna organize this as well, and then we're gonna run the companion. And, uh, and I'll show you how to do all that, all right? It just takes a little bit, so hang tight a second. Sorry, got to stretch up and I'm a little tired. All right, so here we go. All right, now that it's done, we're gonna do the same thing with the arrow here. We're gonna click it and go show and folder. And we're going to find that file, which is right here. And we're going to right-click and click Cut. And we're going to go to our... Um, uh, I, I still don't know why my library doesn't show up now. It was showing up, but now it's not. Uh, anyways, we know it's in the Documents folder. So just go to your Documents folder where you created this file or wherever you chose to do it. And there's my folder right there. And I'm just going to drop this, and I'm going to click Paste right in that folder as well. Okay? So there's my SD card contents, and there's my companion. Now, this is the program that we're running. So we're going to extract here. So right-click on this zip file and left click on extract all and it's going to go ahead and extract it here so just click extract 
and it says it's 2,165 files, so that's going to take a little bit. While that's extracting, go ahead and double click on your companion 2.3.7 file. Now, it's going to give you this error here, this uh, Windows protection. Uh, don't worry about it. Just click more info and click run anyway. And then click yes. Click I agree, click next. And I've already installed this, but we're going to go ahead and put it back anyway. Install. There we go. Okay. And once it's done installing, it's going to tell you, do you want it to open? And I'm going to go ahead and click yes right now. Now, don't forget, we're still extracting the other files, but I'm going to go ahead and click finish here. <clears throat> and since I've already run OpenTX, if this is your first time to run it, you're not going to see any models loaded, right? But I am. So I'm going to tell you to kind of ignore what you see because I do these setup videos for quite a few customers. And so what I want to do here is um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of ignore this part, guys, because I'm going to clean up some of my uh, radio profiles here. Um, I want to delete the current radio profile, yep, because that was the first one I did. And then um, I'm going to delete, as a matter of fact, I'm going to delete all my radio profiles, I think. Uh, delete current radio profile, yeah. Oh, the default, sorry. Okay, so let's go to my other radio profile. And again, just ignore this. Um, and we're going to delete these. We'll delete that one, yes. Settings. Radio profile, I just got to get rid of some of these. And at least you're learning how to do that in here. So if you want to see, this is how you do it, all right? So I'm just going to go, and I'm sure there's probably a quicker way, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete these as I can. <clears throat> Excuse me, as I can. So let's go ahead and delete this radio profile. Just shrink these down, all right? So radio profiles, and I'm going to click that one, and I'm going to click delete. Click yes. I'm, I make these all the time, and I forget to take them off. So let's see, radio profiles, X light. That's my old one, and then we'll click delete. Yes, okay, and I'll keep doing, I'll clean the rest of this up later, but I mean, I, I hate to do it while you guys are watching, but at the same time, um, I want to get this uh, delete, yes. What is this? <laughs> Sorry, those are my kids screaming outside. Okay, so anyways, so um, we have our radio profiles here, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, but this is, this is, uh, OpenTX open. We'll come back to it in a second. Now let's look at our extracted files, which are right here, okay? So if you go to the folder that we created, right, we have our downloaded SD card contents folder, we have our companion, and now we have our extracted folder. This is the contents we had right here that were actually in the zip file. So double click on that and go to your sounds folder. And the first thing you wanna do is just delete all the languages you don't intend to use, right? So we're gonna delete these five at the bottom, and then I'm gonna delete the two at the top, okay? And so then there's that. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take the rest of the contents here, all of them here, right? And I'm gonna highlight them and I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna click copy. And I'm gonna go back to my folder here, the original folder, and go to SD card and I'm gonna click paste, all right? Basically what I'm doing now is I'm making a custom SD card folder and you're gonna see why in just a minute, okay? So now what I've done is I've got what came in here is now in here. Now I can just delete this. I don't need this anymore. But I'm always gonna save the zip folder because um, if I ever need to go back to it, I don't have to go dig in for it, okay? So we've got our SD card content folder here. And now what I want to do is I want to take everything that's on here. Well, I want you to just look. Everything that's on here is ready to go, okay? And I'm going to, I used to just copy this to my memory stick and save myself a bunch of time, but uh, some people, they had a hard time doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead now and make sure everything's there. I'm going to go back to my OpenTX. Okay, and my, my stuff is ready here. So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to take your memory stick, right? Take it, take you format it or done whatever. Go ahead and take it out of the computer. And so to do that, you want to left click on your, um, or right click, let me get here, uh, on your uh, USB. Let me show you what that is. See the icon here? Just to safely remove it, just right click and just left click on eject new volume. Boom. So that's going to come out. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and let me show you now. Let me get back to here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio over. And with the label facing up, with the with the uh, size, you know, the size of the memory stick facing up, go in there, and you're just going to hear it kind of snap in, and it's done, right? All right, so I've got my battery now, and there's a couple things we want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug our battery in, and we're going to turn the radio over. And the next thing we want to do is we're going to take the two sliders on the bottom here, and we're going to hold them in like that. You'll hear them click, and we're going to press the power button. But when we do that, we're going to press the power button quickly and then remove all our fingers at the same time. Ready? Watch. 
there. So now the screen comes up and you see your bootloader version here. You see your firmware uh, option to write firmware, restore EEPROM or exit, and then you see your current firmware, which on this one was 2.3.5, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off my memory stick here, my uh, SD card reader. I'm gonna plug in the cable that they sent us, right? So this is the cable that they sent us. I'm gonna plug that in, okay? And when I plug this in here, on this screen, when I plug this in, you're gonna hear the computer kick in. So one, listen to what happens. There you go, all right? So for those of you that have plugged in flight controllers and everything else, you know exactly what that sound is, okay? So now that it's there, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the screens and I'm gonna put the window screen there. So there we go, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is you need to create a radio profile. And that's why I was deleting so many of mine. So let me go ahead and just see what I have left here. So I'm gonna take out this one and I'm gonna just delete it because I gotta make sure I don't confuse, oh yeah. These screens are gonna open because right now it's reading the SD card and the, um, the uh, uh, onboard RAM, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, just you can close those and uh, I'm gonna delete the profile, yep. And I wanna basically start from scratch with you guys and I should have done this earlier, I apologize. But um, I, need to, I needed to uh, get a couple other things done. So let me just delete these real quick and then we'll start. I should be close now. Um, okay, so I don't think, I don't know if I have another one. I do right here. So let me just delete this one. I don't want to have any conflicting ones. Was, I don't want you guys to get confused with which one I'm running. So let me just make sure we're going to home, uh, X9D special edition. Let me go ahead and delete that. All right, I think we're close. Yeah, I only got three models left. Uh, and uh, okay, so I don't have an X9 light. Oh no, I do. So I'm gonna leave these, okay? Because these are the, these are actually my three. These are the three that I use, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new uh, profile for you. So again, you're gonna click on settings, and then go to radio profiles, and then click add radio profile, okay? And this is very important. Label it something that's for you. Now for me, I'm gonna label this um, uh, uh, X9 D. Whoops, X9 D P 2019. That's X9 D plus 2019 radio. And now I need to find the correct radio under radio types. So make sure when you drop down, you look for X9D plus 2019, not X9D plus, okay? So click that one. And then I'll explain, and I have another video that explains these options, but for right now, I'm just gonna tell you what to click. Click no heli, click Lua, click uh, the new font, which I do like, and then your Flex R9M, which is a, a part of a FreeSky um, protocol, okay? So make sure that these three, are, these four are clicked, make sure you have English as your language, if English is your language. Uh, make sure you have the right radio checked here and then name it something here. Now for these are why I had you create those uh, folders earlier, okay? So it's gonna wanna know where these folders are and since we already created them, we're ready for that. So we're gonna click select folder and we're gonna go to the documents and we're gonna go to our um, FR Sky right here and we're gonna select our SD card folder. That is where our SD card is uh, data is being held. And our backup folder, we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna go back here and click backup and there's our folder there and click select folder. Everything else here, uh, you don't have to mess with, so just make sure you have mode two selected. And then I do select these three boxes, okay? So one is gonna be backup before I, uh, before I write firmware, uh, put a new version number on the firmware and then also offer to write it to the radio when I'm done downloading it. Uh, so, and you don't have to mess with the default stick mode as long as it says mode two or default channel order, okay? So you're good there. Now what you're gonna do is go back to the top here and click application settings. And here what I want you to do is I want you to make sure your stuff matches here. So you'll show your splash screen. You can check for firmware updates. You wanna do only releases that are stable. You can use the model wizard, remove any empty slots. And then for your backup folder, click select folder. And again, you're in your backup folder already, but if you're not, just go back and click that and click select folder. And then I say to automatically back it before I write firmware, and then nothing else here matters. Okay, so just click okay. There you go. So now at the top you have FreeSky Tyrannus X9D Plus 2019 profile, and it's gonna say X9DP 2019. So that's it, right? You're good to go. Now you have this download error right here. And what this is, is this is actually gonna check for the latest download on the radio to make sure we have it. Now I already ran a download once for this, but it's not on this radio. So I'm gonna say check for updates. It's got no updates available, okay? So what I wanna do now is I know I downloaded, but for you, here's what's gonna happen. Um, let me see if I can, um, I'm gonna click download firmware because I know I don't have it yet. So I'm gonna click download firmware and there's my firmware here and I'm gonna tell you where you're gonna store it, okay? So where it tells you you wanna save, you see this long file name here? This is, this is the uh, radio that we have. And then look, these are the options that we selected, right? So it's just named all of that. So you wanna go to your documents folder and you wanna to go to your um, uh, FreeSky uh, folder that we created in there, and then go to your SD card folder we created, and then find your firmware folder. And in here, 
right click in there and left and left click on new folder and what we're going to do is we're going to start organizing our firmware right so the first thing we're going to do is this is an open tx firmware so we're going to type open tx uh, fw okay and that means all the open tx firmware that we use is going to go in this folder so you can click enter on that and then double click that to put this file in but make the file sh sh shrink the name down right so all we're going to do now is we're just going to take all this and delete all this junk and just put just like that boom right it's going to make it a nice short file name okay and then we're going to click save now what it's doing there is it's saving it to our uh, sd card content folder and it's going to ask now do you want to write this and i want to click yes i do okay now here's the deal some of you may get a hardware compatibility error with this okay so i'm going to i'm going to check this here but if you do get a hardware compatibility error and you're sure you've picked the right radio don't worry about it. Remove the check. That's why mine was removed because I got one on the last one I did. So I'm going to click check hardware compatibility and I'm just going to click right to TX. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see, it did not give it to me this time and that's probably because I've updated the radio, but some of you will get that. Please don't worry about it. That's just, uh, it's an understood with this option. So as long as you've got the X90 plus 2019 firmware uh, and you're sure you've picked the right radio, go ahead and remove the checkbox and tell it to run. It'll be just fine, okay? Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and click okay. Now we've already downloaded the SD card contents. There is a chance that there's an error with this SD card. When it turns on, it's gonna see some sort of an error with the file. Don't worry about it, I've written them to see. So some of you may see an error afterwards or not. Just relax, this is the newest release, so there's probably gonna be a fix for it if you see it, okay? But I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. So we don't need to click download SD contents because we already did that, all right? So let's click okay. And now our firmware to our radio is done, but we're not done yet. What we want to do next is we want to go ahead now and synchronize our SD card on the folder, I mean on the computer, with the SD card, the SD card contents on the folder with the SD card that's in the radio. So we're going to go ahead and click synchronize SD, okay? And it is not, let me see, where's my SD card? So it's going to be right here. So make sure if it says it doesn't detect it, make sure you put it in there. That's going to be our D, our new volume. And we're going to tell it to go ahead and start, okay? And what it's doing now is it's taking everything that we created in that SD card folder on our computer and it's copying it over so they're going to become mirror images. And that's very important because um, while you don't have to have an SD card on your radio for it to run properly, it is very important uh, and it makes it much better to be able to do it this way so you can load features and things that otherwise you can't save. Okay? You can also back up your radio and do some other things. So you're going to see this here happen. So let me just go ahead and um, while that's going on, okay. So while this is happening, let me explain to you some of the errors that you may experience, all right? The first error is you may get a hardware compatibility issue. Uh, don't worry about it. Again, click the checkbox and, and to remove the checkbox so it doesn't have to check it. The second thing is the 3.2.7 or sorry, 2.3.7 says to use the, um, the 2.3.6 SD card content files. However, on a radio I did recently, I did, after loading it, I did get a wrong version of the SD card file uh, error when I turned it on. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get that this time. It didn't affect the radio, and I'm waiting to see what they're fixing. And they may, they haven't fixed it as of today um, for some radios, but I'm going to check anyway. So, okay, now you can tell it was, all the files have been created. So now there's no errors, um, and everything is done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close this. And I'm gonna check and make sure that we got everything over that we needed, right? So let's go to our new volume. That's our memory card there. And look at that, everything's here, including our firmware. You see that? So everything that we put on the computer is now on our SD card. I'll close that down. All right, now here's the deal. We're not done yet, okay? There is a chance, and again, these are different errors that I've seen, that once you get done with this, if you try to turn the radio on, it's gonna give you a blank screen. So I'm gonna show you what you do next. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually update the bootloader uh, using this program instead of trying to turn the radio on and do it. And you'll understand in just a minute. So watch what I'm going to do next. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my USB. Um, uh, let me let me, let me me give you the right screen now because I want the radio on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to come down to my USB, eject here, and I'm going to right click and click left click on eject new mo a volume. Okay. And then I'm going to eject uh, Tyrannus F. Right, now I can unplug my USB cable. And now I'm back. Now look at the screen, okay? So let me show you what I'm looking at here because we don't need the computer right now. So here's the screen, right? And what you can see here is now it says firmware is OpenTX X90 Plus 2019 2.3.7. I think you can see that, right? Okay, uh, but our bootloader is 2.3.5. So we've got to get these to match, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click exit. Welcome okay. to OpenTX. Now, if, 
<laughs> you're gonna see some errors here. Throttle warning. Okay, we got our throttle. Okay. All right. So now what we need to do now, if you do see errors, and let me give you an example. If you do not, if you are not able to get your radio to come on once you click exit, meaning it just stays blank. Okay, here's what you're going to do. This is how you update the bootloader without having to um, access the, the memory card, okay? So you take your battery out completely and take your USB cable and plug it directly in, okay? And you're going to hear the computer kick on again, okay? And what you're going to see now is your green light is going to be on on your power, and I'm going to show you what the computer looks like, okay? So there we go. Uh, don't worry about that. We can click that. Okay, so we're back at this screen, and assuming your screen did not come on when you click exit, you, you can hear it trying, but it's not. Here's the fix. So you will come down to this uh, spot here, and where it says, if you look in the bottom left here, it's going to tell you what it is, but it's going to say, write firmware to radio. Now, this is going to actually update the bootloader, so click that. And what we're doing is we're accessing um, the card, uh, the location. So we did our X90, but there's our card, there's our firmware. So this is the firmware we downloaded, right? And we want to push this onto our radio. So we're going to click right to TX. And it's going to do that right there. And there it goes. Okay. And it's going to start writing. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to bypass, this is going to fix any error that you might have um, where you are, uh, where you did your firmware update but you're unable to get the, the controller to turn on afterwards, okay? And I've had that problem and I unplugged the radio, I did everything and turned it back on and all I got was a blank screen. I, I couldn't get it to boot up. And it's because I couldn't get the firmware to update properly. Once I pushed this through, it was fine. So I'm just showing you a way to do that. There's a way to do it on the SD card as well, but if you don't have access to the SD card because you can't get your radio to turn on, then you have to go this route. So I just recommend you do this if you have any problems, okay? So give it one second, it'll almost be done. Okay, 77, 78, 79, 80. All right, we're almost there. All right, now we're done. So we're going to click close, and again, we're going to find our USB icon, and we're going to eject the thing. So right here, just click eject STM32 bootloader. Boom, and we're done. Now you can unplug your radio, and you can take your... Um, uh, Battery, plug it back in, and now we're going to turn the radio on. Welcome to okay. TX. Okay, and now it's perfect, all right? So now if you want to see, uh, let me turn this off real quick because I want to show you something. So if you wanted to see if your bootloader updated, right, you just hold these in and click it again real quick. Now look, see how the bootloader, oops, let me do it this way. See how the bootloader says 2.3.7? Okay, so that's how you update the bootloader if you don't access the memory card, right? You can do it from the program as well, but you're not doing it. You're doing it after you remove the battery and you just plug in the USB card, okay? The other way to do it would be if you were, let's say you were in your main screen. Whoops. Let's say you're in your main screen here. Welcome right? to it, Patia. Okay, so you're right here and you want to update it. You would uh, hold your memory menu button down and then click page and you go to your firmware folder. Remember, we created that and there's your OpenTX firmware folder right there. We created that and then there's your firmware right you would basically hold that down and it would say flash bootloader and you would just click it and it would flash it and there you go you would still have it it's two ways to do it but if you can't access the screen because you have one of those glitches where it doesn't start up then you do it the way i showed you on the computer or else you could do it this way either way so we've got the radio now with all our uh, updates right and if you want to look you can see uh that if we click page page and we just keep going whoops let me go back so we keep going through okay now here's our radio setup here the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through our radio setup. So the first thing is we want to change our year. So let's go to our year and click your little rolling button here and just take it to the right year, 2020. Okay. And then the month, I'm going to take it to four. And then the date, I'm going to take it to 03. Okay. And then what we're going to do, what time is it? It is now 12.52 PM. So we are going to go to 12 and go over here. Two. Okay, now I've got a battery calibration. I'll do all that later. I'll show you guys what that is. But for right now, um, everything else is pretty good. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, everything else looks fine. So TAER. Okay, good. All right, so um, we are on mode two. Everything looks good. And then our multi -ch our default channel, we've got TAER. Okay, so uh, we can click page. We go through here. Everything else looks good. Just click exit now. Okay, the next thing is, I just saw it there. We want to go to calibration. So go ahead and hold menu. And hold your page button down for a long time. And look, 
It'll go backwards that way. And look, you see your versions here? Everything here is excellent the way you want it, okay? So let's go ahead and do it again. And now you're in your calibration. So again, let me show you how to do that. If you hold your menu button down, now, or sorry, if you press your menu button, hold it down, sorry. And you have an option now. You, can, you have seven pages. It says one, th one of seven if you see that right there, okay? So you have an option. You can either go two, three, four, five, six. Now here's our calibration, right? Let's say we pass it. We want to go back instead of having to go forward. Just hold your page button down for two seconds and it goes backwards. See, six of seven, five of seven. But if you click it quickly, it goes forward. So here, let's go to calibration, hit enter. All right, now it's going to tell you in a second, hit enter to start. And you want to put your sticks in center mode. So put your sticks as centered as possible. Okay. And then get your slider here, your top ones here. All right. And your side ones here. Put those in the center. Right, and that's where it's asking you to start. When they're in the center, click start, or click, uh, sorry, click enter, okay? And now it's telling you to move them. So go ahead and move all your sticks, okay? And just do one at a time. So once you do that, go left, right, up, down, and then just gently, don't push too hard because it won't be the same as when you're flying, okay? It'll set the endpoints too far, and then do the next one. So I just go all the way around, and then I go backwards the other way, okay? And then I go up, down, and then I go left, right. Okay, and then take your dials and turn them down, and then up, down, and up, just like that. All right, and then leave them back in the center. And the same with these, all right? Excellent. Now, when you're done, hit enter, and you're done. So now your radio is calibrated, okay? Now, as far as setting up your radio, you are done. Okay, this pretty much takes the radio and sets it up where it needs to be so that you can function and you've got all the updates to run both Access and the previous uh, uh, D16 uh, channels, okay? So you don't have to just run Access only receivers now, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and um, stop the video here or I'll, yeah, I'll, well, no, I'll just keep going, all right? Because this is actually gonna be setting up for long range. So what I'm gonna do next, oh, yeah, I'll stop the video here as far as voice-wise. So if you don't need to see the rest of this, you can stop now, okay? If you don't need to see how to set up the long range or a module or something, okay? But for the rest of you, here it goes, okay? So I'm gonna install this R9M module and show you guys how to do the updates on that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our radio off. So hold the power button down, okay? No, what'd you need? I just have to get my oh yeah, no, you're fine. I'm gonna take a break here in just a minute. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good. I'm Oh, they're doing homework? Yeah. Okay. Do it, All right, babe. Let me know if you need my help. All right, love you. Love you. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to take the uh, long range module, and we're going to pop it in here, okay? And one of the things that we want to do is we want to understand that there are going to be firmware updates that are needed for this module, okay? So um, we're going to be using that OpenTX quite a bit now, right? So let's get ready. So we've got our long range module, our R9M module in here. We've got our battery connected. And... What we want to do first is we want to make sure that we get our update. So I'm going to go back to my computer screen now. Okay. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to our web page. All right. Cyclone FPV right here. Okay. And from that open TX, I'm just going to click this link that says go back to the free sky uh, tutorial page. So there we go. And it's going to pull that up. And here I've added a link for the R9M module downloads. And then I'm also going to be using an R9MM uh, uh, receiver. So I've got all those links. So the first thing I want to do is I want to update the R9M. So I'm going to click that. And close this open TX now. So it's going to give me the um, uh, free sky. And here's the download page, right? So here's my firmware. So the only firmware that I have right now um, is going to be this telemetry issue firmware that this release that was done in 2003, uh, 2019. Okay. I don't believe we have anything else for the R9M. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click firmware and I'm going to download it. Okay. And here it goes right here. Now, again, we're going to keep track of this by putting these in our folder. So that download, I'm going to go ahead and say show in folder and I'm going to right click and cut and then I'm going to go to our um, documents folder and I'm going to go to our free sky right here. Sorry, I got the phone ringing. I apologize, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste that uh, here. So paste. So there is the um, there is the folder right here. And so now what I want to do is I want to extract that. So I'm going to click extract all just like I normally did with the SD card contents. Okay, I'm gonna let it run. Okay, so there's our folder. So if I go back now, you're gonna see there's the SD card, ver I mean, there's the um, zipped file, and then there's the extracted file. So now, FreeSky has a weird thing about putting a folder and then a folder and then a folder. So we're gonna kind of sit through this and find it out. 
What I want to do now, though, is I want to go to my SD card folder, and I want to go to my firmware folder, and I want to make a new folder, kind of like I did for OpenTX firmware. I want to make a folder now, new folder, and I'm going to call this one FR Sky, right? Oops, new FR Sky, and I'm going to call this um, uh, TX uh, FW, okay? And that stands for FR Sky transmitter firmware and the module I'm going to be considering a transmitter so we're going to go ahead and do that so once we create that I'm going to create another folder in here and I'm going to call it R9M okay so that's where I'm going to put my uh, firmware so now let's go back to our folder and here is our uh, R9M files and you see how there's a folder inside a folder so just keep clicking it and you're going to see it right here the LBT is going to be for um, uh, Euro, Europe uh, uh, protocols and not, uh, these are for non-US. I'm not gonna use those, so I'm just gonna delete that. I don't need any of that. But I am gonna take the flex in the FCC, okay? I'm only gonna be running the FCC right now, but I'm gonna keep them both anyway. So let me, I'm gonna highlight them and I'm gonna click cut. And I'm gonna go back and go to my SD card and go to my firmware and go to my FreeSky folder and my R9M and I'm gonna click paste. Boom. So there is, there are the firmware for those, right? So now here's the next thing. Um, I also know that I'm running the R9MM, uh, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, and instead of just doing this multiple times, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my uh, page here, and I'll go back to our downloads folder, and I'm gonna go scroll up to my R9MM downloads page, okay, which is right here. Okay, now we are gonna be running we're not going to be running the access firmware, even though this can handle the new access protocol. We're actually going to be using the, um, the standard firmware uh, prior to this. And so here it is right here. Uh, this is the firmware they're going to download. And um, let me go ahead and make sure everything else is the same, and it is. So let's go ahead and click download. Okay. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tell it now. Uh, and you see how it says R9 Mini. The R9 MM and the R9 Mini use the same uh, firmware. So... Don't worry about it if the name looks weird to you. So we're gonna click show in folder and we're gonna cut that. Oops, I didn't highlight it, I cut it. We're gonna to go to our folder and we're gonna paste it just like we did the rest, okay, which is right there. And then we're gonna go ahead into our SD card and let's go ahead into firmware. And now let's make a new folder again. And this time we're gonna call it uh, FRSKY RX. FW and this is going to be where we put all our receiver firmware in and again if you don't want to be that organized about it fine But I can promise you at some point you might regret it So just try if you can at least stay uh, keep it organized like this now We're going to go to our we, we're going to do this R9 and we're going to extract this Okay, so let's go ahead and click extract all click extract All right, and again, we may have a folder inside a folder here and we do so I'm going to delete this one I don't need it and I'm going to take these two and I'm gonna cut, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna to go to my SD card, and I'm gonna to go to my firmware, and then my RX, and I'm gonna make a new folder here called R9MM, and in that, I'm gonna paste the following. Okay, and there they are, okay? So now, right now, we're, I'm focused on the FCC, okay? Uh, so here goes. All right, so with that done now, we're good to go. So we've got everything ready to go. So now what we need to do is take the radio and plug it back into the computer so we can synchronize what's on the SD card, okay? So let's do that real quick. And to do that, we're gonna close everything else down and close these two down, okay? And I've got my OpenTX here ready. So again, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, hold the, uh, let, me, let me show you like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the two sides here, the two sliders, and click it real quick and let go. And then I'm gonna take my um, USB cable that they gave me, I'm gonna plug it in, okay? And all I wanna do now is I wanna just synchronize my SD card, okay? So here it goes. When I click that, and it's, sorry, right now it's reading the SD card that's on there, so there's a delay. You're gonna see a bunch of things here pop up on the screen in just a second. It's right now just reading. It's trying to read all the contents, so give it just a minute. Uh, okay. So you see how, see how the screens start popping up here? So this is what it's uh, looking at here. That's the uh, one part of the uh, SD card. And then it pulled up the new volume. You see how everything's here. But if you look in our firmware folder, we don't have those new folders yet because we haven't created them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it to go ahead and start cloning or duplicating. 
and here it goes. And you, I think you can watch it in real time, actually. So it's going to create. So if you want to watch them, it'll start putting it in our, our new volume folder here. It should. We'll go wait and see. Oh, let's see. Just sitting here waiting like y'all, so hang tight. Okay, so it says it's done, and I'm gonna see now. It should have. Whoops, 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 whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Hold on. That was my mistake. Shouldn't have clicked that. Let me close this down. And let me go back now and look at our, uh, where am I at? Let's go here. Okay, see all the folders are here now? So there they are. I accidentally made this folder. I didn't mean to. I clicked that by accident. So let me delete that. But you see these now? They match what's on the computer. So we're good now. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and again, we're going to eject everything. So left click on your uh, USB here and eject. And then uh, do it again and eject. Okay. And at that point, go ahead and pull the USB out. There you go. And you're going to see your screen here. Uh, let me do this here. Hold on. There you go. So now you're back at this screen. So just go ahead and go to exit. Welcome to OpenTS. Perfect. Throttle warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Everything's set now. Okay. So we've got our SD card contents. And so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and update our, um, we want to go ahead and update the R9M, okay? So here's how you're going to do it. First thing I want you to do is I want you to hold the menu button down and click page, go to your firmware, go to your FreeSky TX firmware, go to your R9M, do your FCC, and just click that and hold it down. And it's going to say flash S port, nope. Flash internal, nope. Flash external, yes. If you pick the wrong one, you can brick the radio. So please, you're flashing an external module that's being plugged in, so make sure to select external. So just click it, and here it goes. So now what you're gonna see is it's gonna say writing, and it's gonna start updating the firmware, and I think if you look on the back, you're gonna see the light here. You see how it's blinking? It's got red and green going. So you know it's, it's, it's working, right? And while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and get the R9MM out. So I'm gonna open that up. Because the next thing is we have to update this, right? So we're going to go ahead and do this. And you're going to need an update cable for that, okay? So if you don't have an update cable, um, let me know because we supply them on our website. And all you have to do is, and I'll show you this real quick. While that's, while that's updating, and I'll leave that on top of the screen here, let me just show you. If you go to our website, okay, and you type in, uh, I don't know, FR Sky uh, Firmware maybe? I think that's it. Let's see. I think that may pull it up. There it is. There's the cable, it's two bucks. Just go on there and order it, all right? And it'll get you what you need. But I mean, you know, or else if you need to do it, you can let me know and I'll do it for a couple bucks here and before I ship it out to you. All right, anyways, let's get back to what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and put the radio back. There we go, okay? So it's still writing. Now I'm gonna use this little device here uh, to power it up when I want. So because uh, you can, this little sucker right here, I'll tell you, for anybody that doesn't have one, this is a real awesome thing. Instead of having to solder in your receiver every time to your, uh, 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 drone to make sure it's working. I can just plug it in here and then it can interface and show me the S bus uh, If the S bus is working or not and I'll explain to you more about that in just a minute um, But uh, right now we got to get ready. So we're, we're updating our R9M and we're almost done. Okay All right, it just beeped and it says we're done. Excellent. So it says okay flash successful So we're gonna click exit now what I need to do next is I need to find the update panel now the new uh, free sky um, uh, the new uh, X9D plus uh, has the pins right here. The previous one had it on the outside, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our update cable, all right? And let me look at how this one is done. So it looks like, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with our ground to the outside, okay? So now on a QX7, the ground is to, well, it's, I guess it's the same way actually. The ground is gonna be to the outside. So you can actually now use that's cool. So now the same cable will be for both, okay? 
All right, so here we go. So we're going to plug that in like that. And in this case, ground is represented by the gray, gray wire, and um, positive is represented by the orange, and then S port is represented by the green. Okay, and then here is our R9MM. Let me open this for you so you can see what we're looking at, okay? If you look at this diagram right here, right, and I'll try to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. But if you look at that diagram, there, okay? So you have, you have your five volt here, or your voltage in here, your ground here, and you have your S port here. These are the three that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna go, uh, well, I guess for the colors I have, it'll be orange, gray, green, okay? So let's just make sure that you understand that. So I've had people put the wires on backwards or other way around, even if they're red, black, and yellow, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you follow that pin structure. So I'm gonna leave that here so you can see it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, this, is, this represents this sitting, the, the receiver sitting like this, okay? So you have your, and I hate to have this little piece right here, so let me just kind of get this paper out here so you can see, because it's really hard to understand, see what I'm talking about with that there. Okay, so if you look right here, get that off of here. There. Okay, so if you look right here, all right, you've got these four holes at the top, which match those four holes right there. And then you've got the five holes here, which match the five holes here, okay? So we know that the second hole from the bottom is voltage in, and that's gonna be orange. So that's voltage in. So I'm just gonna pop that right through the hole and let it sit, okay? Hopefully it'll fit, yeah, there we go. We know the middle one is ground. So we're gonna take the gray wire, and because of a lack of space, we're gonna go one up, one down, and then we're gonna take the S port, and we're gonna put it on the other side there, going down. We now have all three cables plugged in, ready to power up our receiver. So you just gotta be careful, okay? I'm gonna, try to, I'm gonna try to make this to where you can see it at the same time. So you're gonna see it light up. If I can get this to kind of sit properly, you're gonna see it start blinking here and hopefully that'll work just like that. Hope so, hold on. Wish me luck, we'll try. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna hold our menu button down again, click page, go to firmware. Whoops. Now go to the FR Sky RXW, F, uh, RXFW for the receiver firmware, R9MM. And then we're gonna do the R9 Mini, which is fine. R9 MM and R9 Mini, like I said, use the same firmware. Do the FCC. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the FCC. And we're gonna, I'm not doing the F port right now. It's a whole nother thing, but it's gonna be the same process. So for this video, we're just gonna use um, the S port, uh, configured as an S port with um, S bus, okay? So we're gonna hit, hold that down. And again, you're gonna get these options. Uh, S port, internal, or external. Well, we just said S port. So for receivers, you're gonna do S port. For internal module, which is the internal uh, uh, configurations in here, you would use internal, which we're not doing right now. And then for external, you would use external module, which is what we did for the R9M. So let's go S port. And I'm gonna try, like I said, I don't wanna move it once it starts updating. So let me see if I can just kind of get this to stand here, okay? If I can, I'll keep my finger right there. Maybe it'll, you'll see it uh, without screwing this up, hopefully. Okay, I'll try. But if it doesn't work, I apologize. I'm trying to get it to just kind of sit here. Okay, I think, well, it's not off camera, that doesn't help me either, does it? Okay, I think you'll be able to see it blinking here to show that it's updating, but I don't know. So I'm gonna tell it to flash the S port device, and here goes. So what you should see, you see those lights blinking, I think. You should be able to. Yep, so you've got the red and the green here, right? And the green is solid, and the red will be blinking, and you'll see the radio say writing. So we're actually updating our R9MM right now, and again, we can just sit back, it's gonna take just a minute. So you have to have that cable though, right? You need to have a cable to be able to do this. Um, and so if you don't have one, just let me know and I'll do my best to get you one. Or like I said, if you want to order the R9MM uh, from me, uh, if you want to order any of this and have me update it for you, I charge a very small fee, but I do it all using my radios and uh, then you get it already updated. You don't have to mess with it. So just let me know and you can email me. Uh, and again, to do that, you just use this, uh, just uh, go to our contact page there and just get in touch with me, okay? Uh, all right, so we're almost halfway done with this one and um, we should be good to go after that, all right? Now we just have this awkward silence, so I guess I'll just look at y'all. Hello. 49 minutes into this video. I tell you what, guys, I love making these videos. I love helping my customers out, and this is for a customer. I mean, this is literally a guy who just bought the drone yesterday, and I told him I'll do this for him so it'll make it easier when he gets it at his house. So if you guys need anything, please, again, go to that contact page right there, and just there's a thing to say video request. I don't charge. If you guys ever want to help me out, just buy a product from me, you know, or, or you know, just, and if you have bought product, tell people about me. That's the best way to do it. 
Um, I, don't, I don't ask for any money from the videos, okay? So just let me know, and I love making them. If it helps you, it helps somebody else, so why not? Okay, so we're just about done. And it says successful. I don't know if you see it. There you go. It says successful. So now we're going to exit out. So now we've done it, okay? We've actually finished the whole thing. So what the, the thing now is, is now you have to wonder if it's working, right? And this is why I said I like this little device right here. Let me see if I can get this radio to kind of sit up. Okay, sit up there. I like this device because it actually allows me to power up the receiver, right, using an external power source, like a, you can use a, 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 a battery or whatever. I'm gonna use this AC to DC converter. So I'm gonna move this over here, and I'm gonna use this little AC to DC converter so I can get some power to it. And I'm gonna plug in, and you can see right here, it lets you plug in your um, this, this ribbon here just like it was a, in a quad, right? So it's gonna go just like that. Oh, I say that. Come on. Uh, I, I made this little cable for me, and it's not like the kind you guys would be getting. I find there are three individual wires that I held together, so it's kind of, it wiggles every once in a while. So let's see if I can get this sucker in there without it opening up. <laughs> Hold on. Come on. All right, let me get my power cable out of the way. Maybe that'll be easier. Yeah, the power cable a lot, it's easier. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. But first I'm gonna plug this in. Let me move this out of the way again. All right, so there's my stuff. I wanna make sure you guys can see it all, okay? Now we don't need that. So let's go ahead and replug this back in. So remember we have S port, or we have, I'm sorry, not our S port, our uh, S bus here. So let me make sure now. Okay, so what we would have, would have done is we've got our S port, and so we're gonna do our um, S bus out actually, which is gonna be on the end here. Okay, and we are going to do our, um, make sure I get my wires right here. Okay, we're gonna put our power, our ground here, in the middle. Okay, and then we're gonna put our power here. Now that should give us everything we need to power this up. Okay, and now I'm just gonna make sure. So we're gonna turn this on. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got our red light on our, it's blinking really fast. I don't think the camera picks it up as fast as it's blinking, but it is blinking really fast. So I'm going to go to output or to, to measure here, right? And I'm going to go to S bus. And you see how you see your channels here? Well, if this was connected, if I move these, those would be moving, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bind this. So the first thing to do, let me power that off, uh, let me power that off real quick. So the first thing to do is I'm going to go to my page and I, I mean, I've got, I'm going to hold page down and I've got, sorry. I'm gonna hold menu down quickly or press it quickly. I'm gonna go to page. Now I've got a model in here. It's not a model I set up yet, but I'm just gonna click page. And um, I'm gonna name this, uh, let's see. I'll name it uh, customer. I guess I'm gonna end up owning this radio because I need to have one anyway, so I didn't have one. So now this is mine. Uh, customer. Okay, and then we're gonna do, um, I'm just gonna put for L, R for long range, so I know I'm using R. There you go, okay? And we're just gonna hit exit. So that's customer long range. Now, I'm gonna scroll backwards till I get to my module options here. So check this out. So internal, internal receiver is the next option here, right? It says internal RF. You can see that, I'll highlight that right there, and it says access. Um, and just to show you guys, because some of you called me and said, hey, I heard that you can't run the uh, XX16 or the D16 option. That's not true. If you click it and you turn it, see ACCST D16? You can. You can't run the D8 protocol, but the D16. And some guys, I don't know why they're giving the wrong information out. But this poor guy I was talking to yesterday, he said, yeah, they said I couldn't do it. That's why my XM Plus isn't working. I'm like, no, that's not true. The XM Plus D16 version will work just fine. So you don't have to buy a new radio or a new receiver or anything like that. This was made to do that. If you want to run D8, the older uh, receivers, all you have to do is get a module on the back. It's very inexpensive. But we're not going to use our internal because we're going long range, right? So we're going to turn internal off right now. And we're going to go down to our external option and we're going to click it and we're going to move it. And you're going to see, we're not doing XJT, but XJT is what you would use to run the D8, the older protocol. Well, we are running, <coughs> we are running R9M, not the R9M with access. We're running the old version of the R9M, so you also don't have to buy a new one, okay? <coughs> Apologize. So click R9M, 
just like that. All right. And we're running the FCC, remember? Okay, so leave it on FCC because that's the firmware we did. Now, we're gonna run a 16 channel version and we're gonna run the, just the 10 milliwatt power for now. You can always change this later and there's another video to it. I'm not gonna put you in the full power because I need to be able to explain it to you first. So let's just go with basics, okay? So receiver number one, my receiver number always matches my model number. If I'm in model number one, my receiver matches, okay? So just keep it like that, try to keep it organized, all right? So I'm on receiver one because I'm on model one, which is called customer LR. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to power up my receiver before I tell it to get into binding mode. I'm going to power up my receiver. And to do that, I'm going to get something that can hold this button. I guess I can try it with my fingers. I'm going to hold the button down. It's a little bind button right here in the corner. I'm going to hold it down. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this on. And what you're going to see, if it's working, is you're going to see a solid green and a solid red light. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this and put it in S bus mode. The rest of you, if you had this on your quad, is to know it's connected, you would be in your quad then, and you would move your sticks and see if it corresponds. This is the same thing, but I don't have to have a quad loaded or beta flight on, okay? So now that I'm in red and green, I'm in bind mode, and over here my radio says bind, I'm gonna click it. And I'm gonna tell it to give me 16 channel, 9 through 16 telemetry on. Okay? And you see now, I don't know if you can see that, but my red light is now blinking really fast. And I know the camera probably isn't picking that up, but just trust me on it, okay? So watch. It's blinking really fast, which means I'm bound. So now I can go ahead and click the exit button here, okay? Listen to it, stop chirping, hit exit again, hit exit again, and I'm at my main screen. And would you look at that right there? Right there, you see my telemetry. Telemetry That's, lost. It's, it'll come back in a second. Sorry, I was just, as I'm pointing out, I need to turn the receiver off now, okay? And I need to turn it back on. Now, telemetry recovered. now if you see, I have a solid green light, okay? That means I'm bound. There's my telemetry. See that little antenna right there, which is beside my voltage. Look, if you can see that. Okay. And we're set. Now, if you want to go to measure, watch this when I go to measure. Okay. Now look at the stick. See how when I move the sticks? Look at that. Okay. And you can see here that I have now connected and it is perfect. Okay, guys. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to get it going. Okay. And from there, we'll do a second part, I guess, on setting up the sticks, okay? I don't know if they've given me any channels by default here. Uh, it doesn't look like they have. So um, if you wanted to, uh, you would go to your, um, we'll continue, I guess, to this next step, make it real quick. But if you want to, you click uh, menu, get to your model, click page. There's your model there, right? Okay, so that's all your information. Click page again, page again. Okay, you see your inputs here? So they've only given us uh, four inputs, okay? So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, well, we need switches to work, right? So let's say we want an arm switch. Now, I use the SA. So if any of you ever have me, let me move this down. If any of you ever have me do a radio configuration for you, it's going to be just like this. SA is arming, a three-way arm. And the reason I do that is up that way is disarmed, down is arm, and down is arm. The reason I put two ways on that is I always push it all the way down. But if I should happen to bump it while I'm flying or accidentally hit it, at least I have a second way to stop it, right? So I may hit it, boom, I'm in the middle. I still haven't cut my... Uh, drone out of the sky, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go to number five here, and I'm gonna say, okay, number five, and I'm gonna call this arm, right? So, and, and take your time and put it in properly, okay, guys? So spell it out and just make it, take pride in this stuff. I, I cannot half-ass this stuff. So arm, right? Boom, all right? And um, so that's gonna be it. And then I'm gonna hit exit, and I'm gonna go down to line name, and I'm gonna make it arm again because it's my habit and that's how I like to do it. Once you do it right once, you can copy this on all the rest of your models. All right, there you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to source and my source is going to be my switch. So click it and then flip your switch. Boom, you're done. That's it. Everything else, leave it alone. Hit exit, exit. See, my, my channel five now is arm. Now let's go six. Channel six is gonna be my uh, mode. So I'm gonna click mode. I'm a type mode, I mean M. Now some of these you can only put three letters on or four letters, so, but then under line name you can put the full thing. So let me go D and then let me go E. Okay, so it's uh, input name is a four letter limit, so that's fine. And then let's go down and we're gonna type it again. Okay, now, whoops, no, that's it. Now for my modes, Okay, for my modes, I want this button, which is my SD switch. And what that is, is that gives me 
acro, acro with air and horizon, or you can do whatever you want. Mine are always going to be acro, acro, or sorry, yeah, acro, acro with air and horizon. And there are reasons, I don't care what anybody says, to why I fly without air mode. Okay? And that's more for my testing uh, during uh, tuning and stuff. So uh, acro, acro with air, and now uh, you can set it for angle, whatever, but I have three modes. So that's what, if you get a radio from me, the top right, ST is always going to be it. So I'm going to click S2, I'm going to click the source here. It's going to be blinking. I'm going to flip the switch. Boom, I'm done. Okay, hit exit, hit exit. Now I'm going to go to number seven. Number seven is going to be um, my fail safe. Okay, whoops. We're just going to put fail, which I hate using that word, but that's pretty much what it feels like every time I crash. F A I L. Oh my God, what did I just do? F I L. I don't know how many I can go here. I can't remember what the limit is. S, A, ah, I don't like that. So I'm really picky about this. So let me just uh, delete that, sorry. Okay, so, and then for that one, I'm gonna use a larger switch here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna flip it. There you go, okay. Make sure it's right, nope, hold on. Okay, so there we go. So we have SA, SD, SC, okay? And we're gonna hit exit, all right? And if you want, you could do something else like, um, I don't know, if you wanted to put a buzzer, uh, you could make this one your buzzer, uh, but usually I have fail all the way down and I have buzzer in the middle. And I definitely don't put buzzer in the middle because I don't wanna accidentally hit this down and put myself in fail safe mode. So this will actually be buzzer and fail safe and I don't use this for anything right now, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, I have throttle cuts here for me on this, um, and there are some new buttons on here, So, but this is what I use for my failsafe, okay? So that's what you would get if you're getting it from me. So there, now you're done, so now click page again. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix, which basically means we're tying the two together. So channel five is gonna be called, uh, if you remember, that was our arm channel. So we're gonna click A, um, R, M, okay? And if you look here, our source is actually gonna be our input arm so just leave it like that it's going to automatically by default bring over the channel right so just don't mess with it just name it and call it a day so click exit uh six and then we're going to call this one mode and you don't have to do this but i can't stand not having things uh the same all the way across so just take the time like i said don't be lazy and do it okay and then we're going to do the channel seven and as you can see it pre-populated all our inputs so we're good there and you're gonna see how it affects this in just a minute. Okay, now check this out. So we can go back through pages and do everything else we want, but we'll deal with all that later. Okay, okay, great, great, excellent, excellent. Okay, look at this, perfect. Now, watch the screen. Now, look at, look at how now we have these bottom ones. See, so we always had this, we always had this, we had this, we had this, and we had this. But now check this out, look at that. Okay, we got our switches. Perfect. Okay, so guys, I mean, that is literally it, all right? So um, you now have set up your X9D 2019, X9D Plus 2019 radio. You have flashed it with the most recent firmware. You have added a long range module to the back and I've shown you that you do not have to have the access uh, hardware to be able to do that. You can use the existing ACCST D16 options, okay? Um, and we have now updated the firmware on that and updated the firmware on the R9M uh, receiver. I mean, this is a full package video here to get you. And look, if you're not using the R9M and you were just going to use a regular D16 module, you'd still do the same thing. You just wouldn't be flashing the module, I mean, a D16 receiver. You would basically still do the same thing with the three wires on the receiver, download your firmware, put it on your SD card, synchronize it, and then flash it. Keep everything organized. That way, if you ever need to do it again, you can do it on the fly without having to wonder where everything is. Okay? So please, guys, staying organized with this is key. Um, and I see a lot of people make mistakes on this. And I've given you the basics on how to set up the, um, the radio with the switches. There's a lot more advanced features I'll go into. Uh, uh, but right now, this is uh, what I need to do for my customer. Uh, and if you have any questions, please use our contact page. I'm getting too many emails from a whole bunch of different things, and I'm, I'm just missing them. They're, it's taking too long for me to respond. But if you, if you use the contact page that you see right here, what it does is it, cre it creates a ticket. And then either Samantha or me or Ryan can go through those tickets. But if it's written just to me, then only I can see it, and I can't answer. So if it's a shipping question or a pricing question, which I can pass to one of them, 
uh, I still have to go through it. So please use that form instead. Um, and then always, as always, please follow us on Facebook and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't ask for any money for any of this, but I do ask that you show your support, please. All right. Uh, other than that, guys, God bless. We're all stuck at home with the, uh, you know, staying indoors with the new orders in place. Uh, thanks to the c coronavirus. So um, enjoy your time at home. Spend time with your family. You never know how much time you have left. So make the most of it, please. Other than that, guys, God bless. Stay flying and I'll see you later. Peace.